Today we're going to talk about NSAIDs, so ibuprofen, Aleve, aspirin, etc. We're going to talk about NSAIDs and their role after concussion. Hey there, I'm Dr. Mark, and I've worked with almost exclusively concussion for the past five years, and in that time I've cleared over 500 people from collegiate and professional athletes all the way to like non-athletic but super loving grandparents, and then everyone in between. So here on this channel we discuss concussion rehab, getting over symptoms, and just getting you back to your sport, your work, your school, or your regular life. Most people are going to take an NSAID, ibuprofen, Aleve, again, aspirin, things like that, for headaches from concussion, because that's one of the most common symptoms, but they might also have just like a shoulder ache from the injury. Now the punchline if you're hearing a pinch and you, you're dealing with an acute concussion in this moment, you shouldn't take any new medication, this includes NSAIDs, for any new symptoms in the first 48 hours after a concussion injury. Now, if it's been longer than 48 hours, pause before you reach for that little bottle. There are two significant factors that you want to consider before taking NSAIDs after a concussion, and we're going to talk about those. The first one is the acute red flag period, and the second one is actually making accurate recovery decisions. So before we move any further for the nerds, we're going to do like a quick 101 pharmacology. How do NSAIDs work? So NSAID stands for non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug. NSAIDs are common meds. Again, I've said ibuprofen, naproxen. Basically, they help with reducing pain, fever, swelling, things like that. The non-steroidal part, like as the name implies, non-steroidal means it's not a steroid. So the way that you would take cortisone or get in a cortisone injection to lower inflammation, that's not how this is working. So NSAIDs work by blocking specific enzymes in the body, particularly COX-1 and 2, so cyclooxygenase 1 and 2. And by doing that, it stops the production of these chemicals called prostaglandins. And those prostaglandins are involved in pain, fever, inflammation. So by blocking these enzymes, NSAIDs essentially block and reduce pain, fever, swelling. All right, nerd stuff is over. Let's talk about that first criteria. So that first criteria that we want to consider when we reach for an NSAID after a concussion is red flags. This is, should be the first consideration after concussion in general anyway. Most of the time when we're talking about NSAIDs, it's parents asking me, can I get my kid an NSAID because they've got a headache and it's really interfering with their sleep? Is this allowed? Is this safe? Believe it or not, that example, can I give my kid an NSAID for a headache so they can sleep, is actually one of the exact reasons that we do not want you to take NSAIDs acutely, so in the first 48 hours, after a concussion. So for starters, in 2024, we don't have a single FDA-approved drug for traumatic brain injury. This means we don't have any pharmaceutical drugs or agents known to actually help or improve recovery and healing from traumatic brain injury. And then more importantly with that, relevant to the red flags, we don't want you taking any new medications for new concussion symptoms in the first 48 Eight hours after injury. Why do we say that? Because we don't want you to mask, diminish, reduce, hide any potentially severe or life-threatening symptoms. Now, if you take insulin for diabetes, you take Adderall for ADHD, uh, you know, whatever for depression, anxiety, doesn't matter. Keep taking your normal medications, but no new medications for new symptoms in the first 24 to 48 hours after a concussion. You don't want to cover up any red flags. So let's pause briefly. What are the red flags? I'm going to post them up here. We've got the, this is the list from the concussion recognition tool, six. So the CRT6 is basically a tool for non-medical professionals to help screen and identify concussions. The 10 symptoms, I believe it's 10 here that we want to look for, are red flags where if these are present, you are suspecting something more severe or different from concussion that requires an emergency visit, some emergency imaging and consulting to make sure no surgeries or any procedures need to occur. This list includes neck pain or tenderness, seizures, fits, or convulsions, loss of vision or double vision, loss of consciousness, increased confusion or deteriorating conscious state, so basically becoming less responsive, more drowsy. If there's any weakness or numbness or tingling in more than one arm or leg. If there's repeated vomiting, and this is a common one that I see missed, is people will vomit more than once and they won't go to the ER. And that's a red flag. You, if you're repeatedly vomiting, that's not a good sign. A severe or increasing headache, one of the number one reasons you're going to take an NSAID. Increasing restlessness, agitated or combative, and then visible deformity of the skull. Like if your skull is a different shape, you should probably go get that checked out. So again, if any of these symptoms are present, they can point to something more severe or different than concussion. I want to take a pause here and say this is not to provoke fear, but it is to kind of promote awareness. Red flags are really uncommon. Most CTs and most MRIs are going to be negative. They're going to be clean. There's going to be nothing identifiably wrong with the brain or the neck or anything. And so as a parent, you might say, hey man, I know this sucks. You really wanted to finish the game tonight. You might feel rough for the next night or two, but we're not going to take any medications right now because we just want to make sure that nothing more serious is going on. You know, in a couple days, we can take the Advil or the ibuprofen, whatever. And for bonus points, you'd actually say, hey, because we're rock star parents, we've got you scheduled to see a concussion specialist on Monday because we're going to get you in an active rehab plan to get you back as safely and quickly as possible. Maybe you said that, maybe you didn't. So to transition here, what about after the 48 hours? You've cleared the red flag stage. So you don't have any red flags, but man, is your headache s what do you do? Can you take NSAIDs then? The blunt truth is that your headache's gonna feel better. That's what NSAIDs do. Like they work, they reduce pain, they're gonna reduce your headache. 
probably. But your concussion is not necessarily going to recover or heal any faster. So to repeat this, NSAIDs won't hurt your recovery, but they're probably not going to help or speed up your recovery either. And what's often not talked about with NSAIDs, but it's really important to know, is that the dosing recommendations are that you do not take NSAIDs for more than 10 days in a row. That's when we actually see the black box, black box warnings start to, those risks start to increase. So a black box warning on a medicine just means it could have super, severe, uh, super serious, severe, or life-threatening side effects. And for NSAIDs, those side effects include cardiac vascular and gastrointestinal side effects that we just don't want to deal with. So NSAIDs aren't going to hurt, but they're not necessarily going to help. What else should we know? So that brings us to our second point here. While this last note is mostly for contact athletes, it is relevant for anyone who wants to ensure a complete and confident recovery. When we're looking to clear athletes, when we're looking to clear anyone, but especially athletes, it's this last point here. We want a symptom severity score, that post-concussion symptom scale. We want it less than six. We want normal steady state exercise tolerance. For athletes, contact athletes, we want normal uh, dynamic exercise tolerance. And then for everyone, if we have it, we want a return of normal baseline testing and normal physical exam findings. So low symptom score, normal aerobic, normal anaerobic and dynamic, and normal exam findings. Like that's what we want to see. And while symptoms are not everything, they definitely are a very important piece of that puzzle. We need to know that you're symptom free at rest with aerobic exercise and with anaerobic and dynamic exercise as well. If NSAIDs are covering up your headache during exercise, are you really recovered? We don't know. That's sort of like taking the batteries out of the smoke alarm. Like no noise means no smoke, right? Wrong. So it's really important that we have an unmedicated clearance decision so that we know we're making the safest return to play possible. With all of this said, you're a parent, you're a concussed individual, what should you do? So no new medications, no NSAIDs for the first 24 to 48 hours after a concussion. You want to clear the red flag stage. And remember, these red flags are not all that common. The overwhelming, like overwhelming majority of MRI and CT scans after a concussion are completely clean and normal. So after that, taking an NSAID here and there, not daily, but here and there to make it through school, through work, whatever, just to kind of tolerate it, that's totally fine. But remember, not more than 10 days in a row. And be mindful that this NSAID is not covering up your symptoms when you're in an office visit that's supposed to be looking for symptoms. So we're thinking about like a vestibular ocular motor screen, a buffalo concussion treadmill test, a gap ski goodman exertion test, all things your concussion specialist should be doing where we're tracking performance and symptoms. You don't want to mask symptoms when we're trying to like actually see how you're doing. And the best thing you can do to get over symptoms faster, better, stronger, see a concussion literate provider as soon as you can at any point after the injury. Now, so that's probably more than you ever wanted to know about NSAIDs and concussion. I appreciate you sticking around. If you enjoyed or learned something from this video, you'll probably also enjoy and maybe learn something from this one. Until next time, I'm Dr. Mark. Thanks for watching.